We're now going to go backwards. We're going to take the sum or difference of logs and convert that into a single logarithm. And so we're going to start with an example. Suppose we have log base 8 of 4 plus log base 8 of 16. So remember, if, we're, if we have a plus sign between logs, that becomes a time sign inside of the single log. So we just copy the log base 8, put a parenthesis, and put 4 times 16. Well, 4 times 16 is log base 8 of 64, and then whenever possible we want to reduce our logarithms. So we ask, can we raise 8 to a power to get 64? And we can. So the final answer for this problem is 2. Log base 8 of 4 plus log base 8 of 16 becomes 2. All right, so now that we've worked through that, let's look at another example. What if we have log base 5 of x minus 3 log base 5 of 2? Well, the first thing to recognize is that we have this 3 in front, and that's in the way of combining our minus, because this is going to turn into a division eventually. But it can't do that until this 3 is out of the way. So we move the 3 from the baseline up to the power. So that this becomes log base 5 of x minus log base 5 of 2 cubed, which is 8. Now we can deal with our negative and make that a division of a single logarithm. And we divide 8 into the x to get log base 5 of x over 8. And so we've now gone backwards. We've taken something and converted it into a single logarithm instead of a sum or difference. The last example I want to look at is suppose I have log of x plus 1 plus log of x plus 2 minus 2 log x. Well, here we've got a plus and a minus, as well as a power. So we've got to deal with all of these separately. The way I like to do it is I like to group my all my things being added together and all my things being subtracted together and combine them into one piece. I also like to move my powers up as soon as possible. So these will combine into a single log of x plus 1 times x plus 2 and my power goes up to make log of x squared. Now I look at my minus and I say, oh, that's a division. So this becomes log of x plus 1 times x plus 2 over x squared. And we're going to leave it here, but it's perfectly acceptable to also FOIL this out into x squared plus 3x plus 2 over x squared. But most of the time we're going to prefer, just like we did in the rational chapter, to leave it in its factored form. But if you can remember your properties and know how to use them both ways, you'll go a long way into understanding the properties of logarithms.